Good morning, Jay First Baptist Church. We're so happy that all of you are with, with us th this morning. And those of you who will watch this later on in the day after it's been re-recorded into YouTube or maybe later on on the Facebook page of Jay First Baptist Church. But today is Thursday and we are continuing with our with the days throughout the Passion Week. Remember I mentioned yesterday we would... Um, there was not really anything mentioned in the Bible on the Wednesday, but Thursday is a very full day. The preparation for the Last Supper or the or the past, Passover meal was being done and was held that evening. In fact, with all of the various things and the dialogues and the statements that Jesus made, I'm going to focus on two major issues. But before I do, I just want to share with you what once again that uh, tomorrow... From 10 to 12, that's Friday, 10 to 12, we are go uh, jo uh, Brother Jory and myself are going to be outside of our fellowship hall door, and we're going to be practicing social distancing, and we will have communion cups. Remember I mentioned yesterday at length about the communion cup we will have that has the wafer on the top. You pull off the top piece, take the wafer during the proper time in the, in the communion service, then undo the, t the, the second part and partake of the juice during the service. And so we are going to be uh, having the communion service together tomorrow. So these will be available from 10 to 12. Now, if for some reason you're not able to make it here, please text me or call me and let me know. We will deliver. Uh, we'll put them on, in, at your doorstep on, in, in little baggies, and we will, um, I just need to know how many you need. And we have 200 total, so we have plenty also to, and I did not mention this yesterday, but uh, the office, we purchased special nice pens that we were going to give out on Easter Sunday morning. And it's basically a pen. I'm holding it up. It's on the Romans Road to Heaven. And basically it has a pullout sheet on it. And on the front side, which which the side you're seeing, has, has basically a beautiful uh, um, ancient road from the Romans. But on the back of it, it has the Romans Road to Salvation. And everybody will get one of these. So we will also give these out uh, during um, whenever you pick up your communion cup. So we want to make sure everybody has this. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and, and these are just gifts to say, uh, you know, may God bless you with this. And you never know, this might come in very handy. And these are good pens. We've done this a number of years ago or a couple years back with uh, at another time in the year. But these are for everybody in the church. And um, and it's just a big thank you to say, you know, use this. You always have the Romans Road with you. What a be beautiful way to be able to witness to, to someone. Great way to witness. And I know some of you do do use the, the Romans Road. Now let's get to our Bible study. I'm going to be focusing on two parts here. And they both happened during the Last Supper. Now we know that at the toward the end of the day, the Passover was being done. And now, very interesting, in another part of the passages, Jesus earlier on in his ministry said, "I must have this meal with you," telling to, talking to his, all of his di disciples. Jesus insisted because Jesus was going to take the Passover meal which is not only the oldest um, holiday that is still being participated with today, but it was a holiday, the, the beginning of all of the yearly holidays for the Jewish nation, and the focus was redemption. It was re the redemption out of Egypt when they were slaves in Egypt. Remember the story on the 10th plague uh, when, when, when basically Pharaoh told Moses, I'm going to kill uh, all of you, and I'm going to, um, he basically gave his own death warrant, or his son's death warrant, and on that one night, the final plague, the, the, the tenth plague, that the hand of God came through, all of Egypt, and all of the firstborns were taken. Now, they were told, though, or, or the Jewish people were, that if you put blood on the doorpost, that would protect you, and God would pass over. But, um, but Pharaoh's son was taken, and that was basically showing that Pharaoh was not a god, and that his son was taken, that, that he was not a god, and only gods can produce gods, and thus 
um, through all the ten plagues. And when I need to do this as a as as a study one day in one of our services, but God not only uh, basically softened Egypt to let the the Jewish people go, but also destroyed basically the faces of all of the gods of Egypt or or many of them because they had multiple multiple gods. But the Passover, very important. It was a time when the families would get together and they would be reminded of the redemption out of Egypt. But Jesus would use this far in a far greater way, showing redemption from sin and how he under the new covenant or the new Testament would bring salvation from sin, not redemption out of a nation, but redemption from sin itself. And the two parts I want to go over is the very beginning, uh, and this is going to be in John John 13, and then the second part will be out of Matthew, Mark, or Luke, probably out of Matthew or Mark. Uh, but, uh, but the first part is dealing with the very beginning. It says, and I'll, and I'll read, verse 1 of John 13, Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knowing that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And during supper, the devil having already put uh, into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he came forth from God, riseth from the supper, and layeth aside his garments, and he took a towel and girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So he cometh to Simon Peter, and he saith to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt understand hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is bathed needeth not save to wash his feet, but to clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. So this statement in John, remember, John's statements and John's book is geared to the deity of Christ. And because of that, we see here a um, basically symbolic talk, and especially with this idea of, of washing of the feet, that Jesus came the first time, the first coming, as the servant, the suffering servant. We see this explained at, at great length. And one of the great passages found in the, in the Old Testament Isaiah 53, that demonstrates how the Messiah would come, Jesus was the Messiah, how he would give himself and, and go through horrendous things, and then ultimately death on the cross for our, to, to take away our sins and to heal us from all of that unrighteousness. Well, at this time, though, in this part of this Passion Week, we see Christ taking the position of a servant, and he comes and he, and he starts washing all of the disciples' feet. And when Peter pretty much pushes back, he says, Peter, you either let me do this or you're not part of me. See, what Jesus, and there are many, many things that come from this. This is a very, very rich action of Christ. But one of the things I want to bring out is that our salvation and our relationship with Jesus starts with our salvation. And it starts with Christ. It doesn't start with us. It starts with Christ. And I think Jesus here demonstrated that by the washing of the feet and, and by his statements to, to Peter. And then he also said that there's, that, but not all, that last final little phrase was referring to Judas Iscariot, who would leave, who was preparing to betray Jesus. But to all of these di disciples who would later become apostles, Jesus was preparing them. This was step one. And this was, this was a symbol of sanctification. How the Holy Spirit, through the work of Jesus Christ, when we accept Christ to be our Savior, we ask him to take away our sins. That his blood washes away our sins. 
just like he went down as a servant to wash the feet of, 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 his, of his disciples, later who would become apostles, who also would serve those that they would minister to. And, and, this, sets, and this lays a foundation for those in ministry who participate to preach and to teach, not just the pastors, but the Sunday school teachers, but all Christians as we serve each other. I was just talking to a young lady this morning. I won't give her name because it, she, she might get upset with me, but she does a lot in our community and she's really very caring and what a wonderful, wonderful person. I'm so, I have to say, I am, I'm so um, honored to be able to work with people like this individual who puts, puts herself behind others and puts God first in her life. And I appreciate her so much. And not just one person, but over and over again in our church. What wonderful, wonderful pe people we have. And, and I'll just tell you, we have, uh, we have a great co church community here. But not, not just to, to just be, hang out with. I mean, we do wonderful socials here at the church. We have, we have a belly buster social. Now, if you've never heard of a belly buster social, let me tell you what that is. That's hot dogs, that's boiled peanuts, and that's ice cream. You eat those together, you got a belly buster. And uh, what a wonderful time of fellowship. And then other times, but also too, let me share this with you. Um, I've seen so many in our church and many in our community that really do live Christ in, in their lives. And that's so, so important. So important. Part two of this, and this actually is the ceremony itself. As Jesus and his disciples were partaking of, the, of that Passover meal, they come to a point in it where they're just about ready to partake of the third cup called the cup of redemption. But before they do so, um, I'm going to read out of Mark chapter 14, starting in verse 22. And as they were eating, he, he's referring to Christ, took bread. And when he had blessed, he broke it and gave it to them. And he said, take ye, this is my body. So what Jesus was saying here, and this is also further explained to in Matthew 26 and in Luke 22. In fact, Luke actually is the shortest of the, of the accounts of, of this portion of the, of the Passover meal we know as the first communion or the last supper. So he took the bread. Now the bread at that table was unleavened bread. Now bread is a sign of, is a symbol of provision. Leaven is a sign of sin or a symbol of sin. Leaven we know is yeast. It makes it rise. And it's very, very symbolic of sin because you can start with a sin. And if you keep letting it fester and go and do not confess it before the Lord, guess what? Sins multiply. It's one sin on top of the other and it continues to go and go and go. Well, in this case, if you have bread that's provision without symbolic sin, that's perfect provision. And Jesus totally gave himself on the cross as the perfect provision for mankind. Then in verse uh, 23, and he took, this is Christ again, he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the, of the covenant, which is shed for many. So on that table, they, they were partaking of four cups, and that third cup was called the cup of redemption. And that was redeeming the people. It was to remind the people of their redemption out of Egypt, how God took them out of captivity. Well, Christ's blood, when it would be shed on the cross, would take us out of captivity from sin. We don't have to sin today. As a born-again Christian, I am not under that, 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 that problem. I'm not under that weight. If you don't know Christ as Savior, I'm sorry. You might not be a murderer. You might not be a terrible person. You might be a good person. But you are still bound to sin because that's what we do. We sin. We make mistakes. Whether we fall a little short, whether we make purposeful sins, we sin. And if we don't know Christ as Savior, we are under that. We are, we are not of God's. You can be a very good person. You could have a lot of head knowledge about about Bible and religion. You know, what uh, What sometimes, you know, people get, uh, get on this thing that we just call it religion. No, there's a difference between Christianity and religion. Religion is man's way to reach God. 
um, Christianity is Christ made the way. It's all based on him. And it's a relationship. See, in religions, if you go to man-made religions, we make God in our, in our own image. In Christianity, we are made in his image. There's a big difference there. So we have here this communion service that we are going to be participating as a church together with our communion cups. Now, there might be somebody at a distance. Maybe you don't, you don't live in the J area and you're watching or you have watched and you would like to maybe watch us on the Sunday morning and participate. You can make your own unleavened bread, very simple, or you can get a, or you can get some matzah from the store. That's all right. Uh, grape juice, um, per, preferably um, you know a purple color, the the red color, and that's symbolic of the blood. Very interesting. When we lived in Honduras as missionaries, grape juice was not a it was not easily gotten. So what they would use was grape knee high. And some of you might say, what is grape knee-high? That's a grape soda. So I remember when, when I first did a communion down there, they had these soda bottles of grape knee-high and they were passing it out. It was grape. And I'm not going to get into whether it counts if it's fake grape or not. It was grape. Had a little fizz to it too. But we participated in that and they would make the uh, they would use the unleavened bread, which we call pita bread. You can use pita bread. You can use um, cracker, matzah crackers. Anything without leaven is the best. If you just can't find any of that, or all you have is a is a is a muffin or a bun, that you know that's like a you know piece of bread. You can use that. Okay, I'm not going to you know cut and cut down and say oh that's no wait. The key is this, if you desire to participate, you know, we, we try our best. Because I, I've been in churches where they have had, they've used bread with leaven. It's bread. And I understand that. Um, you know, our salvation is not based on, on exactly on that. Better to do unleavened bread, but if you don't have it, use what you have. And if you don't have any of the elements, maybe, maybe you've been doing that social distancing to where you just don't have it. Or maybe you don't have the money to even get those supplies. Well, you can always ask the Lord to just, um, you know, remind us in this service as we participate and we do it on the video that uh, that your spirit is with us. You know, communion like baptism, the two ordinances of the church were given to us to remind us of our walk with God. And my encouragement is this, is that always strive to walk with God. You may not be able to get out in the community and do things, great things. You may be a prayer warrior, but that's very important. The great Spurgeon of years ago, the great uh, metropolitan um, church in, in, in London where he pastored, he said the greatest group of people in his church every Sunday was not based on his message, but it was based on the prayer room where people there would pray diligently for the salvation of people who heard his messages. And I would covet your prayers. And you can do that at home. And everybody can, can do that as a Christian. And my prayer is this, is that we continue on. You know, if you, if you feel like, oh, I just can't stay at home. Boy, things are going crazy for me. I just got to get out. Okay, you can, you're allowed to take a walk. Remember your distancing. You can wear a mask. And I have some masks here. I have uh, a mask I can wear when I go out. And I will wear them when I go to the grocery store and that. Or out to maybe getting certain things. I'm very careful. I wear gloves. Um, we, need to, we need to practice those things. The medical professionals say they do help. And I was just given a wonderful mask. And I have now one that I can wash and unuse. What a wonderful thing. Uh, but I'll just uh, I'll just final uh, just finally state this that this coming Sunday Easter Sunday when we when we meet together and we have the communion service it is a continuation on what Jesus established when he told his disciples I must have this meal with you because he wanted to show that he was the ultimate redemption for mankind not just from a country but from sin itself, to reestablish us 
back with God. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. And Lord, I do thank you for the opportunities you give. And Lord, during this time when, yes, it's stressful. Yes, some of us are strained. Um, and and I understand, too, that as some of us, we just need to, it just, it's just frustrating. And we're trying our best to, to keep from this virus. And those of us who may be watching who are struggling with this virus, I just ask for the healing hand of Christ on them. But, but may this time, even though it's tough, even though it's, tent, it's tense, that, that during this time, the church can do the mission of God. And may you give us insight, may you give us wisdom, and may you give us strength to be able to reach out to those in our community. And we ask all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great day. Goodbye. Have a wonderful afternoon and morning and shalom.